My name is Jaime Munoz and I'm the Assistant Park Superintendent at Gua Cucamonga Guasi Regional Park, located in the City of Ontario, California. And today we're going to be talking about the Great Horn Owl. Thank you, Jaime, for that beautiful introduction. My name is Shelby Paulson. I'm a park ranger for San Bernardino County Regional Park. My name is Annette Fitzsimmons, and I'm a general services worker with Boston Regional Park. Today we will be discussing great horned owls. Two years ago in these trees behind us, we found a great horned owl. We wanted to know further on this subject, so we did our research. Stick with us and discover what we found. According to the American Bird Conservation, 3.9 million owls live in the United States and Canada. Everywhere in the world, except for Antarctica. Great horned owls have a height of 1.5 to 2 feet tall, weighing 3 pounds as males, 4 pounds as females due to their hollow bones, wingspans up to 4 to 5 feet. Their tail length is going to be 7 to 10 inches long. Today we will be looking at the traits of great horned owls. What is a trait, Shelby? According to Science Daily, traits are a feature of any living organism. So, like my red hair and your blue eyes. Yes. One trait we will be looking at today of great horned owls is their eyes. Owls' eyes are 3% of their body. Human eyes are 0.003% of our body. Owl's eyes are locked in place by a bone plate called the serotic ring. As in this example here. Owls have three eyelids, unlike humans who have only one. They have an upper eyelid, like humans, that closes their eye, a lower eyelid for sleeping, and then an eyelid that moves from side to side to clear the surface of the eye. Because owls cannot rotate their eyes, they rotate their necks. Now let's focus on another trait, the ears. Humans have symmetrical ears, whereas owls have asymmetrical ears, allowing them to better hear their prey. They hear with one ear, turning the head with the other ear until they're able to match that sound and better hone in on their prey. Another trait for the great horned owl is their beak. They have a curved, sharp, hook beak in order to rip and shred the flesh off the prey. Now let's talk about another trait, the talon. Here's an example. They have two in front, one in back, and one that rotates like a thumb to better grab onto a branch or grab onto their prey. Hi guys! Hi Christy! What are you up to? I'm talking about the great horned owl. Oh wow, the great horned owl? Do you mind if I share some information? Sure! Awesome! I want to talk about the diet of a great horned owl. So great horned owls are what are considered to be nocturnal. Nocturnal means that they come out at nighttime and they hunt during the night. 60% of all owls are nocturnal, whereas 40% of owls are what's called dayurnal or diurnal which basically means you come out during the day. What are we as humans? We're diurnal. So they come out and they hunt at night. Owls are also known as carnivores. Now to be a carnivore, you are a meat eater, which means they eat pretty much any small animal that they can fit into their mouth. So you've got gophers and rats and weasels, small birds, things of that nature. So what happens with the great horned owl is they don't have any teeth which means they use those sharp talons and that hooked beak to rip at the flesh of their prey. Once they get a piece of their prey, or even sometimes the whole prey, they'll swallow it head first down their throat. That prey will pass into their digestive system through the esophagus. So let's take a look at the digestive system of a great horned owl. Now great horned owls eat their meat whole. That includes everything from muscles and nutrients to fur or feathers. So what happens is in their digestive system, they have two stomachs. We have a gondolar stomach and a muscular stomach. The muscular stomach will take the nutrients in the meat and it'll process through the body like normal. The gondolar stomach will actually hold on to things that cannot be digestive like feathers and fur. It is then formed into what's called a pellet. Now 10 to 24 hours after eating, this owl will regurgitate that pellet. Because those items cannot be digested and processed through the body like normal, they must cough those up. 
Now those pellets are actually really interesting. Scientists use them to discover different populations of the animals in the area. If there is one day a pellet has lots of mice and then the next day there are no mice, the scientists then know that there is some type of issue with the mice population. So I think my friend Jaime is around here and he's gonna show us how to dissect an owl pellet. Have you guys seen Jaime? So oh, thanks Christy. Uh, today we're gonna also go over how a pellet is regurgitated from an owl. And on this hand, uh, we will also go over a chart, uh, the owl pellet bone chart that you could actually downline, uh, download online. We'll start with uh, opening the, the actual pellet. And before we get into the pellet, keep in mind that the great horn owl is a, a ferocious, ferocious hunter and they go after anything. Kind of like what Christy said earlier. So as we start to break the pallet open, we'll start to notice that there's fibers and bones. There's also like nails or t almost tooth-like features in here. But to really, really look into it, you have to break it apart. And as soon as you start to do that, you start to notice more bones. Now keep in mind that these, these pallets were brought in from a private vendor and they were already cleaned prior to us actually handling them. Oh, look at that. So here, looks like we have a jaw. I don't know if you guys could zero in on this, but that's the first find. And over here, it looks like if you go on the chart from a mole down to the type of bone, here's another one that we can match up. So this one looks like it was from a rodent in a mole. So as you really start to dig in in their pallets, you start to really see their uh, diet and the areas they might be hunting. Um, and let's see if we could find some more stuff. Uh, what's this guy here? Uh, almost looks like this guy, another bone from a mole. All right. Oh, Christy! Did you guys find anything cool? We did. It looks like we have a handful of rodent bones. Oh, wow. So much cool information about the great horned owl, huh? Yes. You know, in today's world, with all this building and construction, the owls are getting forced into smaller and smaller environments, less and less food for them to eat. Us as humans, we need to find a nice balance to live amongst these amazing creatures. Absolutely. Yeah. So now that you guys know who's hanging out in our parks, make sure to make some wise decisions to protect these animals and their habitats. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Christy. And I'm Jaime. We'll see you next time. Bye.